Hello, my name is Stephen Mayu, and in this video series, I'm teaching you how to build a random quote machine. In the last video, uh, we built out um, all of the markup, um, got all of the elements on the page that, that we need to, to make this work, and that's what you see right here. Uh, so we have our H1 and H3, we got this HR kind of like separator right here. Uh, two P tags where our quotes and author will go, and then a couple of buttons. Um, and right now it looks very plain. There's some simple formatting uh, based on the bootstrap classes that we've added to our HTML, and that's about it. So uh, in this video, we're going to add some more styling to it, so it looks you know a lot better. Um, now, this is one area of web development that um, you know I'm kind of weak at, uh, to be honest. Um, making things look pretty and, uh, you know, positioning things in CSS is something that I struggle with, you know, all the time. And, um, you know, I, I try to make do with, with, with what I know. Um, if I'm stuck on something, I usually go straight to, you know, um, uh, Stack Overflow. There's another great website that I like. It's called uh, CSS dash tricks.com it's really cool all very practical stuff um, but this is um, this is probably gonna be excuse me the shortest video in, in the course uh, because um, anyway I'm, I'm just I'm personally I'm not interested that much in CSS and uh, I'm not like a visual designer however I recognize and acknowledge that you know having strong CSS skills are important and uh, you know having a good eye for design looks good too. So anyway, uh, I want to show you one other cool website. It's called MakerBook. And basically this is this is an amazing website. It's a portal to other websites where you can find, you know, pictures and mock-ups, graphics, color swaths, um, I mean just everything. Um, and a lot of this is, you know, free to use, you know, without uh, attribution uh, to the original author. And uh, I, I wanted to create um, like a pattern uh, on, on my website. So I, I went to this uh, textures page and there, there's so many different websites with um, different you know, textures that we're gonna use. Um, I found one that I like uh, and I went ahead and I put it in my images folder. I just renamed it pattern.png. And it's kind of hard to tell right there, but it's sort of like this repeating pattern with like monkeys and stuff. It's on a light gray background, so I, I kind of like it. I think it's pretty cool. Okay, so um, with that in mind, uh, we're going to use um, some of these uh, selectors um, in our CSS. Um, so it's a good idea just to refer back to the HTML file uh, so you know what's going on. All right, so first thing I want to do, I want to put that um, kind of tile on the background so we don't have that just plain white screen. So I'm going to say body. So I'm referring to the whole body uh, of the um, uh, of the web page. I'm going to say background image. I'm going to say URL. Uh, I'm going to say images slash pattern dot png. And then I'm going to say background repeat. I'm going to say repeat. Okay, let's just save that, make sure that I have the path correct. Oops, path is not correct. I don't think I need this. Let me try that again. Okay, there we go. So uh, we went from like this white background to, you know, a uh, light gray and you can kind of see like these monkey people or something. It's sort of repeating. I don't know, pretty cool. Uh, you can use a, an image if you want to, or you can choose another pattern. Totally up to you. And that's the beauty of these projects. You can personalize it, you know, however you want to. Um, this is good enough for me right now, so I'm going to keep going on with the styling. Okay. Um, basically, now I just want to change the fonts of some of these things, um, uh, you know, just to shake it up a little bit. So I'm going to say all the fonts in the body, uh, the H1 and the the H3 and the, the P tag. And I'm going to get a font family. Oops. Font, um, font family. And uh, the default font that I want is Helvetica. Um, but if that isn't available, then I want it to use the browser to use Arial. 
And if that isn't available, I wanted to use a sans serif font, okay? So this is my preferred one, uh, Havelica. Am I, oh, I'm not even spelling that right. Uh, I misplaced this L's, there we go. Uh, Helvetica, and if it's not available, we'll go to Arial, and then finally, we'll just use any sans serif if both of these are not available. Okay, um, we'll take a look at what that looks like here. Okay, so you can see that the fonts changed a little bit, so just a minor thing, nothing too crazy. Um, right now, I just wanna take a little bit of tweaking with the container. So the container, that's the bootstrap container. Um, and I just want to align everything to the center. So center align. And then I want to add some padding to the top. All right, we'll give it 50 pixels. Right now, um, I guess this is okay. It is, it is rather, you know, close to the top. But if I add that padding to it, we'll get some more, you know, space, some more breathing room for it. Okay, so um, we just centered everything, um, uh, everything in this uh, container. It got centered and it pushed down a little bit more uh, because of that padding top, all right? Um, for that HR, uh, that little line that we had before, I uh, can't really see it anymore. I mean, I can kind of see it. It's, a, it's barely visible. It's like this very, you know, like off-white, line right here very thin it's hard to see against that background so let's style that a little bit uh, i'm just going to change the width here so width uh, i'll give it uh, uh, 600 pixels is fine and then uh, i'm going to just change the border a little bit oops i didn't want that border no border bottom yeah okay i'll give it one pixel make it solid and black okay. Save that and go to, yeah, go there. Oh, oh, I know what happened. Okay, I'm doing that. All right. Same thing here. Okay, so now I got that, um, that line right there, just a nice, you know, pleasant line kind of separates it. You know, you can add a drop shadow or anything that you want to right there. Okay, that's good enough for us. Good enough for me anyway. And then finally, I just want to style that quote box. Okay. So I'm going to put in here. I'm going to give it a border. One pixel. I'll make it dashed instead of solid. And I'll make it black. Uh, I want it to have curved, you know, curves, you know, rounded edges. So I'll give it a border radius of 15 pixels. Um, I don't want all of the text. Let me, let me just save it right here. I'm going to keep doing that. Uh, if we go here, you can see like the, the text, it, it's pretty, you know, close to the, to the border right there. And if we had like a longer, you know, sentence, it, it would touch like the edges right here. I don't want that. Uh, so I'm going to give it some uh, padding. Um, so it's not touching any of the borders. I'll just say padding 10 pixels. And that's top, bottom, left, and right padding. And then finally, um, you know, uh, I don't like how the buttons are touching the border at all. Uh, that doesn't look good. So I'm going to give this um, margin. Okay, just the bottom though. Margin bottom of, uh, we'll say 15 pixels. Okay. So refresh that. Okay, cool. So we got some, um, we got some more padding in there. We got a little bit more breathing room. Um, Okay, for me, um, I, I'm happy with this. I'm totally cool. Um, I, I think for you, I mean, definitely get your creative juices flowing. Um, you know, uh, play with the different patterns, or background images. You can add like a drop shadow uh, to your text right here. Um, you can do something, you know, more interesting with this. In, in the free code camp example you saw, you know, every time that you click the button for a new quote, it, it changed like the background color, it faded. Uh, that was really cool. Um, so, you know, try to do something like that. It, it's totally up to you. Um, for me, like CSS uh, is something that I save until the very, very end of a project because 
it's always that's where the most tinkering and tweaking comes you know moving something five pixels to the left and you know getting things vertically and horizontally aligned so I mean for this video series I, I, I don't want to focus on that so much um, I'm happy with this um, so I'm gonna call it good and uh, we're gonna go on to the final video in this series the JavaScript that's my favorite part the engineering kind of under the hood sort of things uh, all right so uh, we'll stop the video here and I will see you in the next uh, video where we will take care of the JavaScript. Okay, goodbye.